Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome that this is your first time visiting me. I am super stoked to get into today's video because we are going to be taking a very close look at the new mass market edition. This is my beloved indie copy, by the way, but we are gonna be taking a look at the mass market edition of This Might Hurt Tarot by Isabella Rotman, published by Liminal 11. And Liminal 11 has very graciously sent me that special edition so I can share it with you guys. And I, y'all, I am such a huge fan of this deck. I have talked about this deck over and over and over again from the moment I got it. I will link up in the cards for you my original deep dive walkthrough of every single card in this deck. So unless there's any changes, we're not going to be going deep, deep into the symbolism necessarily of the This Might Hurt Tarot, but we are going to be comparing the Indie Edition to the Mass Market. Now, when I tell you this is a beloved deck to me, like this is my Desert Island deck. This is if I could only have one for the rest of my life, like this is probably the one I would pick because it has always sort of been my all-arounder, the one I can read on any subject. I just love it. And my copy is pretty thoroughly hashed. You can't really tell. Uh, hopefully, you probably can see some of the wearing on my um, black holographic gilding from this original copy. I actually was very generously sent by a member of this community a backup copy of this deck that is still brand new with the white pearl um, edges, holographic edges. So I have that stashed away. So I have another backup indie copy, but this is the one that I have legit like just put through the paces. And I have torn some of these cards um, and it doesn't really show up on camera too much, but I have definitely, I use this deck a ton. So. When I tell you I have opinions about that this might hurt tarot, just like know it's for real, right? So this is the indie version. We're gonna be doing some comparisons of the indie to the mass market. So I'm gonna definitely be doing that. So I'm gonna have this deck set aside so we can do that. This is the original uh, independent version of the guidebook, which was in black and white and had nice full color, or not full color, full page images for every single card and a nice full page uh, description. Now in the past, Liminal 11's guidebooks have tended towards being a little bit light on descriptions after the majors, like usually the keywords are just really short descriptions. Um, so we will see, but I've already taken a little peek and the guidebooks of similar thickness, so I am optimistic. But we're gonna set this aside so we can compare that as well. The special edition, oh my gosh, you guys. The special edition comes in this Gorgeous. I, I gasped aloud when I took this out of the box that it came shipped in. If you've ever gotten one of Liminal 11 special editions, then you'll know they package these so carefully. They're in specialized cardboard packaging that hugs this box on every corner. And this is meant to be a literal keepsake box, which for me, it definitely will be. I love this deck so much that I, for the first time ever, like truly ever y'all, cause I keep my decks in like Peggy bags. You know how I, you know how I roll, right? This is my, this might hurt bag. So I always keep my decks in Peggy bags. However, I am incredibly tempted to just put this on a shelf somewhere so that I can gaze at it anytime I want because it is breathtaking. Plus it opens like this and it opens, in fact, my, my stuff here is in the way, but let me just show you. It opens all the way because there's nothing more frustrating than a box that just doesn't open all the way. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. I'm knocking my camera, but there's a really sweet doggo here on the inner lid. Um, these like contrasting uh, elements here of this like poppy, kind of poppy red color. I mean, it's just the presentation to have this box for a deck that I love so much. I'm just, I'm very excited. So anyways, you get into it. Um, now I will have links of course to the special edition pre-order down below. It is due to release uh, this month. So keep an eye out for it. I'm probably going to show this video close to the release date. So I'll have the relevant details down below for you as well as a link where you can purchase this deck from Liminal 11 directly. So you cannot get the special edition from Amazon or anything like that. If you're just after the deck though, you can purchase or pre-order just to the deck through uh, your local mass market, like source, retailer, publisher, from Amazon, uh, et cetera, book depository, that kind of thing. So you can get the regular mass market as well. So I may have a link to that also down below, we shall see. But anyways, let's get into what is in here. So it comes with this reading cloth, which I'm gonna have to ask Peggy to iron, iron it for me. I think you iron it with these metallic-y bits face down just to be on the safe side. But this is a nice, I wanna be careful of my candles here. This is a really nice like cottony kind of cloth, linen-y kind of cloth. It is not that silky scarf material, but it has the This Might Hurt sort of logo here on the back. And then it has um, a pomegranate in the corners. Ooh, see, I knew I was gonna get in danger with that candle. But anyways, there's a snake coming up the side. It's a really nice little cloth. So this comes in the special edition. I am going to see what it looks like once it's all ironed up, but I expect that it will be really nice. And if you're a sewer, there is room around the border of the design if you want to um, back it with something. I don't know that I'll bother, but I may um, have Peggy iron it for me. So that's fun. 
You will get your numbered uh, certificate showing you that it is uh, a limited edition. They only print a limited number of copies of these limited editions and that is it. They don't reprint them, at least they haven't yet um, that I've ever seen. So you get this certificate of authenticity. And then you get in this special edition, this sweet little pocket journal, which is so cute. And then it's got a quote here from Isabella Rotman. And I love this. So the way this is like set up like a little tarot journal, you have a section here to note your question, a little dot grid section where you can literally draw your tarot spread and then space for your interpretation on the right. So this would be a really quick, great little travel, that's what it's meant to be, I'm assuming, a little travel tarot journal. And this feels like a field note size notebook. I can probably confirm that, but it's probably a personal size. So you could even probably put it in a personal sized cover if you have a cover. If you're a nerd like me about covers, that's probably the one that would fit, I'm guessing. And then look at this. You have a custom molded tray where you have little thumb holes here so you can reach in and pull out the decks because there are two. There's the tarot deck, the, the limited edition or special edition version of the This Might Hurt. And then you also have the This Might Hurt Oracle. I cannot wait to get into these. But as you can see in the bottom here, it is like fully custom fit, but it also is not glued in. So you can literally slide this out and then you have this gorgeous custom box. So I, I don't know. I haven't decided if I'm going to just take the guts out of this and store other things in it, but I think right now I'm tempted to just keep all these goodies together. Eh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it ends up going, but let me set the box aside as much as that pains me because it is so pretty. And then let's get into these. So this is brand new to me. So we will definitely be talking about this in a little bit more detail, but first let's do a little comparison again of my indie edition. This might hurt to the mass market. So Box wise, the Liminal 11 boxes do tend to be a little bit bigger. So you can kind of get a feeling for the size difference here. They're actually the exact same height this way, but this way, the, yeah, they match up that way. The Liminal 11 box is just a touch taller. You can see about that much up there. And what was the other dimension I was going to check? That one? And then, oh yeah, and then this way. It's just a little bit wider. So it's actually not much, it's not a, a dramatic difference. In fact, let's just double check, but I'm pretty sure this box would fit just fine in my Peggy bag. Yeah, totally just fine. So it's basically almost the same, touch bigger. Uh, the Liminal 11 boxes have this neat aesthetic because the way they're set up, unlike any other brand's boxes, you do get a little flip bottom here, and then you can pull the deck out of its little drawer. Um, before I do that, quick look at all of the artwork on the box. There's some thumbnail images of some cards here, a little write-up. We, of course, have our ISBN at the bottom and uh, Liminal 11's website address here. Oh my gosh. The colors on this though, and that's something I definitely want to compare when we look at the deck side by side is to see if there's any saturation differences, that kind of thing. But I'm loving the look of the colors on this box. Oh my gosh. So we have our devil, death, empress, and the world there. And then of course the other part of the Liminal 11, I mean, sorry, the um, This Might Hurt logo. So that when you open the box, I probably didn't show it very well. Let me do that again here. When you open the box in the bottom, like it's a cool effect, right? You get the design makes a whole design on the bottom. So cool. I love these boxes. They're not always the most practical, but I think they're really nice. So there's that. So much more colorful box. I'm definitely about the colorful box for sure. So it does come with a little cardboard insert just to keep things from sliding around during shipping. I like to remove those. And then there's some beautiful lining inside the box as well. Oh, knocking things over. Okay, so let's take a look at the guidebook for size. So it is a little bit thinner, just ever so slightly, but it is a little bit taller and wider. So that's really nice. Again, with the colorful. So this is the indie version here and this is the mass market here. So we will definitely take a look at the guidebook to see where the differences are, but I wanna talk about the cards first. Oh my gosh. So they are glossy. So compared to the Indie deck, you can see how they catch the light much differently. So the Indie edition is matte, the Liminal 11 is glossy. Now I have a few things to say. I, as much, glossy decks are not always practical for me for filming because of the way they catch the lights and it just can be a little bit annoying. However, when it comes to just what makes colors pop, gloss decks are really nice. So as much as I talk about how I really prefer everything matte, it's practical reasons, you know? Because when I look at colors in glossy cards, it always is just such a satisfying thing to look at, you know? 
Um, so the colors really feel like they pop here in, in a way that I really appreciate. So this is, oh sorry, there's one other thing I wanted to say about gloss and that is that if you set one of these cards, I'm not recommending you do this. This is just something that's happened to me so it's relevant. If you set this like say uh, next to a burning candle and you get wax on it, you can usually get it off. It's a lot harder to do that on a matte cardstock. It's also much easier to, at least for me, it's been much easier to take a fine point Sharpie and write a keyword or something on a glossy card and to later remove it with alcohol. Um, these are things that I've experienced. There are perks to glossy cards is I guess my point. And please keep in mind, <laughs> I am such a hardcore lover of this deck that there's probably nothing Liminal 11 could do wrong here unless they like really botched the images. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I'm really obsessed. So I want to find the fool so we can do a direct comparison and I might do this with a couple of other cards but before I do let's talk about the cardstock differences in general for thickness so you can see here that the mass market deck does come in notably thicker let's see how it feels for bend see it feels like it's going to be bendy and shuffle nicely we'll see at the end how it shuffles and the other thing so it's thicker um, feels like it's going to shuffle nicely. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. This one has the really gorgeous, really blingy holographic edging. And you know what? I'm tempted to grab my backup copy so we can see if the holographic edging here in this silver gorgeousness is the same quality or color as the indie version. So if you have the pearl version, that might be a helpful comparison. So let me grab that. I'll be right back. So here's my mostly untouched, um, I think this was the second printing or third printing of the This Might Hurt Tarot Indie Edition, um, but this one has the pearl edges. So I mostly leave this one untouched, but we can compare the way that the holographic is done and see if it's similar. Just for, you know, science, I guess. So this is what the indie one looks like. Let's see if I can do this where I can show them together. And this is the mass market. Now, I don't know about you, um, but these, you know what's funny? These look and feel... They look identical as far as the amount of rainbow and the amount of bling and all that kind of thing. But funny enough, the Liminal 11 edging or gilding, I was going to say it feels smoother. There's just a tiny bit more texture actually though. So the Liminal 11 has just a tiny bit more texture. I like when gilding is not so perfectly mirror smooth. Sometimes, I should say sometimes, because then when it starts to wear, the chips blend in a little bit better. And I think that's also true with a paler holographic. Like when I compare this to say my black hollow, you can really hardly even see the, the rainbowing in my black edged. Like it's really hard to find the rainbow anymore. It's there, but you have to really be trying to see it. Um, and as it's gotten chipped, because it's such a dark color, that wear starts to show a lot quicker. So I really do like the paler, um, edging on this. Okay, let me put away my pristine. Well, actually, it's in order. So why don't we use this pristine copy to do a side by side? I think that's smart, actually. Go me. Okay, let's do that because it's already in order for me. We can actually see what the difference in the colors are. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom us in quite closely. And we're going to do a little flip through of all of the cards. But just sort of noting the color differences. I can tell you in person, this pops so much more and I think it's because of the gloss. Like just, I don't know, there's something about it in person that just makes it feel so much more vivid. I'm also really excited about this because it means that this is a copy I can take with me out. Like if I'm reading for friends, if I'm going out somewhere and I, I'm worried something might spill or whatever. So this one, this almost feels more matte than my original, but maybe it's just because it's next to I don't know. Okay, so, okay, let's talk about colors. Let's zoom in and we'll talk about colors. So already on the Fool, I can tell you that the contrast or the sharpness of the image seems much stronger. Um, there is a slight color difference. So you can really see it if I kind of go like this. You can see how this is the Indie and this is the Mass Market. I feel as though I can more clearly distinguish the color of the pants, for example, from the shirt. So the pants here are actually like a kind of olivey khaki color, but over here it looks a little bit more muddied and a little more green. The patches here have higher, like uh, they, they're brighter against the pants. The bag looks a little bit, it's easier to recognize as a different color if that makes sense, a little bit less muddy. Um, even the yellow here on the bird that's on our little fool's shoulder just seems a little bit less dull, you know? And again, I think some of that is the gloss. But other than that, these are exactly the same. So it's a pretty small difference. The color of the dog here seems kind of different. Like this seems actually a little bit more um, yellowy 
and this is a little bit less. So if I would say anything, I would say probably, and you can see it in the sky too, this seems just a slightly more neutral. This seems slightly more uh, warm toned. So that would be the immediate difference I noticed from a color standpoint. Oh, wow. I feel like you can really see it here where the face here just looks a little bit brighter, not lighter, just brighter. The cup color here seems a little less um, yellow. So over here we get a little bit of yellowing to the tone. So yeah, that's what I'm really noticing the most, but gosh, I really feel like this mass market version just pops so much. There's our high priest. Yeah, you can really look at the moon. You can really see that they've taken some time here to maybe color correct just a little bit, just to kind of clean things up. Here's our Empress. But as you can see, the cards, the artwork is the same, which is what I needed. Oh, did I even talk about the backs? Hello? Okay, so here's our indie back, black and white. I really like the colorful backs of the mass market edition. That's just beautiful. I'm really excited that I have edition that I can play with like just for me that doesn't have, because I do like glossy cards. I talked about this. I feel like the last time I raved about a glossy deck was with the uh, Unicorn Oracle. Yeah, look at this Hierophant. He really looks yellow in this image compared to here. You can really tell that the colors seem cleaner, more neutral. So I'm gonna probably go through this pretty quickly. One of my favorite strength cards of all time. This Indie Edition, I'm gonna have to just crack it a little. It's still kind of sticking a little because I've never shuffled it or used it or even flipped through it like this. It was just sitting there to be safe as a backup Indie. It's kind of funny because now that I'm looking at this mass market, I'm almost tempted if it weren't for the gloss, I think I do prefer the coloration in the mass market, which is saying something. It's it's rare to me that a mass market deck really does their version so close to the quality and the, you know, the, the brightness, the colors, just everything. It's just they really, really did a good job on this. Again, here, I just feel like this looks so much brighter on camera than this one does. I'm just going to say a lot of the same thing, but... Let's just, I might even speed this up a little as I flip through and then if I have something notable to say, I will speak up. Wow, I mean here, the moonlight, like look at the difference in these figures, just how much like they look more bathed in light here and it's just that color correction, I think, but it just, the moon's just a little less yellow and I really like that. I love a cool toned moonlight. It's not cool, it's still quite warm, but <clears throat> I just really like that. So now we're into the minors. Again, you can really see, like this is a very golden card to, to begin with, but when you get the clouds next to each other even, you can see there's almost like a pinker tone here. Okay, again, I'm saying a lot of the same thing. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. I'm just very excited. One of the things I love about This Might Hurt Tarot is the ways that the minor arcana suits really, their color palette really makes them stand out on the reading table. So the wands all have this like orangey color, this orangey golden color going throughout, which I really appreciate. I really like to be able to immediately spot the elemental balance in a tarot reading, and this deck does that so well. And I love the gradients in the backgrounds. Oh, I love that. So no artwork changes that we have found thus far. Can't wait to compare the shuffle. Oh, that's interesting. There's like a line. So this is a, I don't know if you can see it. There's a line, a, a vertical line. Do you see it there? On this indie version. I don't know what happened there. That looks like maybe a, something happened where like the laminate pooled or something, something scuffed or yeah, that's weird. I've never seen that on my other version. So yeah, that's just a flaw on my indie copy. I just realized one of the differences probably is that this is a um, matte coating on the card. Whereas this is a, I think this is probably a laminate. Um, now the difference between a laminate and a coating is that a laminate is gonna usually add a little more thickness because a laminate is usually a, a thin sheet that's actually laid over the card, whereas a coating is applied as a liquid and then cured. So often it's like, I would guess this is maybe UV matte coated. So it's a liquid that's applied and then cured um, versus a actual sheet of material that's applied. And so that could actually, these could be the exact same cardstock thickness because they don't feel, if anything, this feels just a touch stiffer than this one does. Um, but that could account for the height difference in the deck, even though they're basically, they could be almost the exact same cardstock. There's another one of these vertical lines. That's so funny. I've, like I said, I never noticed this on my other copy, but this is my backup copy. It's not a big deal. Okay. Wow, you really can see, I think, the difference in tone, where the swan actually looks white here, whereas really, 
by itself, this already looks pretty white, just like kind of dreary with the rain. But when you hold it up next to this, it's like, wow, that's much whiter and that's much more yellow. It's funny, this one actually almost seems to go the other direction. Um, this one seems a little bit, slightly more neutral maybe, or lighter somehow. I've been looking at these too long, I can't quite tell. <laughs> these cards are stuck together a little bit. Sometimes it happens with the edging. It was happening on the indie, by the way, not the mass market. So, I don't think I need that else. Oh, it's so much. No sticking, by the way, with this glossy one. Sometimes the glossy decks are kind of mashed together and they get a little sticky. Um, no stickiness so far with the gloss. King and Willie, we have a bonus card. Oh, this is cool. Oh, I want to look this one up in the guidebook, of course. Um, so I'm going to keep that out and we're going to do a little shuffle. I'm not going to shuffle my indie, but I will shuffle my, I'm sorry, I'm not going to shuffle this version because this is my backup. I'm going to put this one away now that we've done this little exercise. But I am going to do a shuffle comparison real quick. We'll look at the extra deck here in a moment. So this is my original, I'm gonna zoom this back out a bit. This is my original uh, indie version that I've been using and using and using. It's pretty broken in, so keep that in mind. But it's stiff, but a nice indie, <laughs> it's a nice indie deck shuffle. What does that even mean? Um, it shuffles nicely, it's got some bend and snap. I haven't had issues with that with any cards creasing, but I have had some tearing. Um, and when I say tearing, I mean we're almost like it's kind of like peeled up. Maybe peeling is a better word. I've got a few cards that have done that. Um, or areas where the gilding kind of flaked onto the card and kind of stuck there. So there's some like black specks on a few of the cards. There's some imperfections for sure. But that's what the shuffle looks like on the indie version, my old indie version. Let's take a look at the mass market and see how we shuffle. Okay, we got some clumping. I think that might be the gilding being fresh. Let's just see. Oh, nice bridge though. Let me just smooth it out a little bit. Really make sure I've grabbed it properly. Yeah, I feel like the gilding is causing it to clump a little, you see? Oh, we're throwing cards. Let me, hand, yeah, the, a glossy hand over hand is often really nice. Like the cards slide really nicely when they're glossy and that's a nice shuffle. It does not feel, if you have the Modern Witch Tarot, that was their first one that was really glossy. It was a really stiff, hard to shuffle cardstock. This is not like that. This is definitely more bendy. I wish it wasn't clumping like that. And I think it has something to do with the way that the gilding is catching on my fingers. Now again, this is a, let's see how we do here. We've got a little bit of, um, distortion from the shuffle. This could be the kind of gilding that just helps the cards, I don't know if helps is the right word, but it causes the cards to sort of hold their shape a little bit after they've been riffled. Let me see if I can try that other kind. Some of you guys do this weird corner thing. I'm gonna try, it's not weird. It's weird to me because I don't know how to do it. I'm gonna try to do it. It's like a corner shuffle thing. I feel like that was almost easier to control getting, nope, it's still quite clumpy. I'm not very good at that shuffle though. All right, and let's of course test the fan. I mean, it's silky smooth because it's glossy. Um, and then let's keep that card out. The original fans really nicely. Now when it was brand new, I feel like it clumped a little bit on the fan. Um, it wasn't quite as like silky smooth, but it's quite broken in this version. So that is the comparison for the cards to the original. Let's take a look at the guidebook and the differences and then we'll take a look at our bonus card here. So the mass market guidebook, let's get zoomed in. The mass market guidebook is, like I said, all black and white on the inside. And we have really just um, a base, some basic three card spreads uh, to use. A little bit about majors, minors, and each suit. A little bit about the court card, the numbered cards. And then we get right into some conversation here about gender and tarot, the different court rankings talking about that, some re uh, information here about reversals, and then we get right into card descriptions. And in the indie, I will say this, this needed to be a little bit of a deeper margin here in the center because it kind of, it's kind of smooshed on that side. But anyways, you get um, a few paragraphs for every card with a black and white image of the original illustration on the left. And it does this through the entire deck until you get to the end. Now in fairness, 
Um, every time I refer to this guidebook, uh, I really enjoy the entries. I think they're really great. They can help to provide a newer understanding of the tarot because Isabella comes at it with, I think, a very modern perspective, which I think really is helpful, especially for a beginner reader. This is a great deck. But I don't read with the guidebook very much in this deck because I just know this deck so well and it reads so beautifully in an intuitive way that I very rarely think to go look at the guidebook. But I always look at guidebooks when I'm reading for myself. I just enjoy the extra layer in my readings. So yeah, um, I have used the guidebook but not as much as I, I feel like I would like to because it's really quite good. So let's take a look at the format. This one feels nicer, like the size feels nicer. It's a little bit less crunched feeling than this just because it's a little bit bigger, obviously. And of course they did a beautiful job with the margins, right? We can see the margins are really nice. They're not cramped in there. So let's take a look. We get a table of contents. I'm about it. I love a good table of contents. We have a foreword here by Melissa Sanova, who's the author of Kitchen Table Tarot and Tarot Elements. Then we get the introduction. This is by Isabella. Um, a more expanded note about gender and tarot, which I really appreciate. Then an introduction to the Major Arcana and we get right into it. So now same amount of text. So let's do a quick comparison of the entry of the Fool and just make sure that there, the text is the same. That's not to say there's not been small adjustments here or there. I will say this is much easier to read. This font is a little small, so the font's a little bigger here, plus they had more space. So just a quick comparison, and it looks to be that the wording is identical. So no changes to the wording of the card entries. So that's what we get for the majors. And then, and we're, we will look at that bonus card, I promise. Okay. I'm going to skip it for a moment. There's a little introduction. So that same introduction about what about the minor arcana, they've just moved it. So now here it is right before, including that section on the numbered cards and the court cards, right before the actual numbered minors begin. So this is really cool what they've done here. So they have saved on page space by not having full um, illustrations. Like instead there's one card per page, but it looks like the amount of text has stayed the same, which is incredible. Um, I don't remember this though. So here it says Ace of Wands and then it says the green light or Two of Wands, the travel card. I don't remember that. Let's see if that's in the original. Let's just go to the Ace of Wands. Oh, it is there. I guess I just never, it's there. I've just never really paid attention to that. But those little sort of summary phrases for each card are present in both. But what they've done illustratively, which is really cool, is you get a bit of the illustration sort of built into the background of the page, which I think is a really cool move. So you get hints, you get to see a little bit of the artwork while you're referencing the guidebook, but it's not the full image. It was a great space saving thing that I think is really innovative. So way to go Liminal 11 on that. That was a really great choice. I feel like you get to see what the card looks like, the some relevant things from the symbols. It's obviously only a sliver of the image, but it works really well here. So that goes all the way through until we get to the end of the Minor Arcana, which is the King of Pentacles. And then when you flip the page, you immediately get into this section on how to read the tarot, performing a reading um, with some step-by-step -step instructions for people new to the tarot, which I think is great. I think that was not in the original guidebook. Um, let me confirm so I'm not talking out my butt here. Hold on. I'm pretty sure there was nothing, no step-by-step -step on how to read the tarot when we flipped through this before. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I lied. It is here. The step-by-steps are here. Step four, five, six, four, five, six. Okay, so it's the same. It's just been reorganized a bit. I actually like this stuff being at the end. I think that really works. Here's our section on reversals with a little snapshot of a kind of squished hanged one, but it hanged man, but it actually, if you open it right where it's supposed to be opened, the image is correct. It's not overly smushed. I feel like that's actually kind of tricky to pull off in um, designs. That's pretty, pretty cool. It's a neat effect. <clears throat> and then we get some tarot spreads. So we still get some three card spreads, but now there's a new cycle of healing spread, um, a path to the world spread, which is awesome. And then we of course have our thanks, the bibliography, recommended resources, and look at this 10 of cups image in the back. <gasps> and our king of cups, he's my fave, this dude. I love him. Again, with this image that takes over both pages. It's a beautiful little guidebook. This looks really well done. Props to Linnell 11 because I really like that we have those full card entries for every card. So let's take a look at our exclusive card. Now, I don't think this is exclusive to the special edition. I think this is just the extra card for the mass market edition. Um, I don't have the mass market edition though. So if you do, I would love to confirm if this card is also in the mass market edition. Um, so let's take a look at the guidebook entry for this bonus card. Oh, this is cool. This might hurt or this might heal. And you can see that in the image. There's um, our character here 
hugging our wolf in a very like sort of comfortable like big spoon little spoon situation there and then when you reverse it you get the this might hurt image so to me this might speak to the cycle of healing let's see what it says a girl and a wolf cycle between tender affection and a difficult struggle in the upright position the girl tenderly holds the wolf in the downward position the girl and the wolf are locked in a desperate battle the figures are cyclical with the Four symbols of the minor arcana in the corners, suggesting that struggle and peace are temporary positions in a never-ending cycle. I love this so much. The wolf represents the external world. Risk is inherent in a well-lived life. There will be vibrant joy, crushing pain, and multitudes in between. All experiences that are meaningful, that are truly joyful, can also bring you the most pain. This is so true. In the downward position with the girl and wolf fighting at the top, it suggests a time of great difficulty. The external world has bitten you. Times are hard and you're reacting to that hardship. In order to return to equilibrium, acceptance is key. If you fight what has happened to you, blame yourself, or refuse to recognize what is going on, you'll be, you will add to your own suffering. Accept what has happened and you can become a stronger person on the other side, able to form meaningful bonds with those who have had similar experiences. In the upright position with the girl and the wolf at peace at the, on the top, it suggests a time of healing. Humans are social animals that evolved to thrive in community. Connection is the key to our survival and our highest goal, and it is connection with others and the world around you that will facilitate growth. Take care of your people, love your world, and you will also be taking care of and loving yourself. That's really beautiful. Now, as somebody who always keeps my decks shuffled so that the cards are always in the upright position, I was kind of thinking about that as I was reading this. And here's my conclusion. When this card comes up in a reading for myself or if I'm reading for somebody else, um, I'm unlikely to use this for client work necessarily because of the gloss because I, I record my client readings. So those tend to be I tend to reach for matte decks for those. But if I'm reading for somebody, maybe I'm reading for Peggy or I'm reading for a friend or something with this deck, or I'm reading at a shop or at a local event, and this card comes up for a client, I feel like I'll be able, I will intuit, essentially, what makes sense for me in that moment. In that context of the reading, is it a reminder that healing is cyclical, that we're going to go up and we're going to go down, which is such a beautiful message that so many of us need to hear so regularly? Um, or am I going to, based on the context of the reading, the surrounding cards, the position, etc., read this in either its upright or reversed meaning. And so I have that flexibility with this card, which I really appreciate. So if you are somebody like me who doesn't read with actually physically reversed cards, I feel like you can definitely still work with this message in a really powerful way. So I'm very pleased with that extra card and it's definitely going to make this uh, mass market version of the deck really special. Now I believe that the not special edition version of the deck does not have these holographic edges. So I'm assuming if this is what you're after, you really want to snap up the special edition, edition version. Um, but the mass market edition is as far as I know otherwise identical as far as the box the cards the guidebook these things will all be the same now the other obviously really really special thing about this deck I'm going to just put these in their little box here the other really special thing about getting the special edition see what I did there it's unintentional but I'm going to roll with it is that you get the this might help oracle deck excuse me um, so first of all, look at this cute thing. It's still in Liminal 11 sort of classic magnetic bottom packaging, but there isn't an interior uh, drawer anymore or like compartment. You just slide your stuff out. But look at this little like squirrel question mark. Is that a squirrel <laughs> on the bottom? I love that. Also, I have a thing for magnets. Am I the only one y'all are? Is this just not the best thing? I, I mean, whatever, it's the little things. Can we talk about the fact that this sweet bonus deck that comes in the special edition of the This Might Hurt Tarot has blue aqua colored metallic foiling all over the cards? Hello? My lights, because they are also glossy, my lights are sort of like reflecting on the card face and you cannot see how stunning this foil. Oh, here, now you can see it. Look at this. You can really see it here. There's enough of it that you can really see. But my cameras are kind of washing out the foiling. As soon as that light hits, it kind of washes it out. But hopefully you can pick it up. These are beautiful. And these have black and white backs, which is super fun because snobby me means that I can set it next to my original mass market and it's going to look so cool. I can not going to always have the backs up, but you know what I mean. So that's pretty exciting. I think, of course, it'll also look fun next to the, um, in the or to, in, next to the mass market edition as well. But... Look at this. Is this not fun? So I believe that the premise of this little Oracle deck, and let's just flip through the cards, is that these are kind of like symbols that you see within the actual deck, the tarot deck itself. So they're titles, not keywords, which y'all know. 
I'm usually a big fan of keywords, not titles. However, let's take a look. They have Roman numerals on the top. So it looks to me, so here we have the dog, the same dog that's on the fool card and it's numbered zero. So this is connected to the fool energy and we have, excuse me, and we have the dog. Then we have the magician's wand and it's the candle that the magician's holding up in the magician card. We have the veil from the high priestess card, the star crown, 12 star crown from the empress card, the ram from the emperor, crossed keys for the hierophant, the bow of arrows for the lovers, the steed for the chariot, and they are numbered to line up, the garland from strength, the lantern from the hermit, the snake from um, the wheel of fortune, the 11, the battered sword, the battered sword from justice, that's really powerful, the rope from the hanged man, the banner of death from death, the middle path from temperance, how beautiful is that? Shackles for the devil, the lightning bolt for the tower, ibises for the star, the mask, love that so much for the moon, the sunflower for the sun, the feather of truth for judgment, really tying back into the imagery of the majors, and Ouroboros for the world. So then what else do we have? So we basically have essentially what is sort of an, a simplified, almost majors only little oracle deck here. We're gonna see what the guidebook has to tell us about these cards, but you also get a card for water. Oh, okay, I was expecting to go into all the elements. Okay, I don't think it's doing that. Okay, so we have water, the hot drink, the broken cup, and these all have, so there's three cards it looks like associated with the element of water because we have the alchemical symbol for water there. Then we have air, we have bird in flight, the blindfold and the double-edged sword. So these would all be symbols we saw in the air suit. Then for fire, we have the bonfire, the cat and the salamander. And then for earth, we have fertile earth, the hooded falcon from the nine of, of uh, pentacles and coins. This looks like it's from the six of coins. So let's take a look at the guidebook and see how we're meant to work with this. So we have, like, this is a black and white interior without thumbnail images, but we still have sort of some stylistic stuff happening here in black and white, like we did in the um, minors of the main guidebook. So we have an Ouroboros there, and then a title page, table of contents, so you can look up each card by its, page, by its name. These are not in alphabetical order, and they aren't listed according to the number on the card which it would be a bummer. I wish it would list here like the number, maybe, I think I just had a glitch and I don't remember how table of contents work. <laughs> I just ignore what I just said if it makes no sense because I'm not entirely sure it does. Okay, introduction. So when I created the This Might Hurt Tarot, I was drawing a portrait of my world. I wanted everyone I knew and loved to be able to see themselves in the deck. At the same time, I stayed true to the symbolism of Arthur Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith's historic Rider Waite Smith deck because I think the system of tarot those two created is absolutely brilliant. Each card depicts an archetype of universal human experience, and within that, every single card can be boiled down to a good piece of advice. Interpreting these universal concepts into your individual experiences through the process of reading, now that is magic. That is what art is about. So I took out the medieval context and Christian imagery, reduced the number of white dudes to a much more reasonable number, added brown people, black people, gay people, fat people, queer people, and kept the rest. That is the This Might Hurt Tarot. The This Might Hurt Oracle is a deep, or sorry, the This Might Help Oracle is a deeper exploration of the tarot symbolism that I love. Each card isolates and lovingly renders a single, I can't talk, a single symbol, whether or not it be an object or animal, within the This Might Hurt Tarot. Each card's meaning is derived from analyzing the symbol. It depicts within the greater context of its original tarot card, along with how to interpret that symbol separate from its original context. The This Might Help Oracle consists of 34 cards, 22 for the majors and 12 for the minors. Each This Might Help card showcases a symbol that can be found on an individual card in the original This Might Hurt Tarot deck, which we already picked up on. Uh, this deck is meant to be used in conjunction with This Might Hurt Tarot. Each oracle card is a deeper dive into tarot symbolism designing 
designed to add information and meaning as a clarifying card. I hope that this might help Oracle gives you another tool with which to have a conversation with yourself, analyze your situation, observe your reactions, and interview the unconscious motives for your conscious actions. I love that. I hope it aids your journey of understanding. I hope it helps. That's beautiful. So then we have a how to use, and then we get into full pages for each um, card, and these are in the order of the um, numbers at the top of the cards, which is really great. Um, and then I'm assuming it goes in elemental order after that with fire... Let's not assume, let's actually check. So yes, so she goes from water to air to, wait, 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 does she? No, wait. <laughs> yes, water to air to fire to earth. So that is the only down back, down, down back, drawback slash downside, is I wish that the elemental cards were also numbered, like just followed the numbering system in a way. Maybe that's just nitpicky, but it might make it easier to look them up in the guidebook. So let's see how this sweet little deck shuffles. It feels like a little bit thinner, but very sturdy cardstock, um, similar to what we had in the mass market deck, a little more flexible, a little thinner. But this is a cute little, cute little dude. Okay. Ooh, it's, it's got more substance, like more structure in the cardstock than I was expecting. Not in a way that's uncomfortable at all, because it's quite a thin little small deck, but... All right, so let's do some samples here. Since we already shuffled this, let's just see what it would look like if we let's put that down at the bottom. Oh, that's, there's the falcon. So here you have the king of swords with the coins card. So let's take a look at the coins card and see what it has to say and how that might inform our king of swords. So for coins, it says it's about money. <laughs> the suit of pentacles is connected to all material things, including the mechanism by which we trade things, trade these things. Money is a medium of transaction, tokens of, agree tokens of agreed upon value that may be exchanged for the objects and services that we actually want and need. Money has no value other than our perception of its value, and yet our practical lives revolve around acquiring and spending it. No matter how much, how much many of us delike, dislike this grim reality, we live in a society in which resources are distributed not according to need but ability to pay for them. Coins represent our finances, which have cascading effects on all other elements of our lives. Okay, I really love this. In this guidebook, it actually has a section that says, as a clarifier. So it says, as a clarifier, coins assert that capital is playing a role in the situation. Options can be limited by monetary resources, disputes around wealth can affect relationships, and the desire for a certain level of income can motivate decision making. There's no limit to the ways in which the fickle flow of wealth can affect you. All right, okay. And let's just take a look at another pairing here. So we have the, let's get out of the pentacles and the swords for a second. Okay, here we have the two of cups and the magician's wand. <clears throat> now the magician's wand, we're just gonna read the part that says as a clarifier. As a clarifier, the magician's wand will land on a card that will assist you in doing what you need to do. This could be identi identifying a tool, resource, comrade, or experience you must go through in order to manifest the purpose of your action. It is not the end goal, it is how you get there. Oh, I love this, this is so fun. Okay, so I'm definitely gonna be playing with the This Might Help little oracle. And I love that there is a little matching clarifier oracle deck to use with This Might Hurt because I use this deck all the freaking time. So um, I don't know yet. Oh, I left a card in here by mistake. Um, I don't know yet in what context I'm going to use this glossy version, but I can tell you that it will be getting used. It may become my go-to for, like I said, when I'm leaving the house to do readings, if I need a deck to bring with me, I feel like this is definitely gonna be one that I'm gonna wanna reach for. I'm really torn because I think I might want to literally keep all this special edition stuff like together, but I want to reach for this more. Like when I'm using my This Might Hurt um, Indie Edition, I'm probably going to want to reach for this. But it's glossy. But this gloss I feel like isn't a big deal because it's like a, just a clarifier. So I'd probably only be pulling like one card at a time. I do love these little magnetic boxes. I'm a sucker <laughs> for this stuff. So for now, let me just put everything back in its little home. Oh, this box is so beautiful. I like how underneath here, you've actually got this little spot. You could definitely put things down here. Like you could put a crystal that you wanna keep with this deck. Um, you've got a nice compartment there for that. This little tarot journal is so cute. We've got our little cloth. Yeah, I'm gonna be hard pressed to not want this box out somewhere where I can see it. It's just so stinking beautiful. Like, hello? <laughs> 
it's gorgeous. You know what, this might actually make a really excellent just, I just realized this might make the perfect little, okay, it's, I know it's kind of bulky, but like this might make a really nice travel kit. Like if I'm gonna go, not, not travel like suitcase type, type travel, but like I'm gonna go over to a friend's house and I wanna have some stuff to read with. It's like, cause there's a cloth in here, there's a little journal. I know I'm knocking my camera, but like, I just feel like it's like everything you need to just like have this wonderful little reading experience. It's a tarot, it's an oracle. Oh, I just, I really like it. <laughs> I really like it. I feel like there's good value for money in here. Now I say that as somebody who was sent this generously as a, as a review copy, but in my opinion, like I, when I, when I tell you that if this had not been sent to me for review, I 100% was going to be buying it anyways, I hope that says something <laughs> because I definitely would have bought this either way. Um, but I'm very grateful that Liminal 11 sent it to me so I can share it with all of you, but it's beautiful. I would love to hear your thoughts on the special edition down below. If you have the indie edition, are you also planning on picking up the special edition? I don't think you're gonna be able to get that. This might, that might, how do I even say it? I don't think you're gonna be able to get the this might help little mini deck, the Oracle deck, uh, outside of the special edition. They usually do exclusive things in that way. So that's what they've done here. But this is gorgeous and I'm so happy about it. Okay, I'm, I'm done gushing for the time being. Thank you for hanging out with me. I really appreciate you spending this time here and I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.